Today's show is sponsored by Hotel Indigo Pittsburgh, Oakland. Fun fact, a few years ago, I met the one and only Jeff Goldblum. Actually, we sort of slow danced around a conference room. It was perfect and so weird. And guess where he chose to hang out with me? The very stylish Hotel Indigo. And if you think that's funny, well, I have an event for you. On Saturday, April 20th, you can attend a comedy showcase. Sean Blackham and Bill Benden are performing there at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are only 25 bucks or treat yourself to VIP and take advantage of a happy hour right there in the hotel. So mark your calendars for a comedy showcase at Hotel Indigo Pittsburgh, Oakland. Tickets are on sale now at facebook.com slash Hotel Indigo PTC. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, it's the case of the missing bobbleheads. 19,000 miniature Yamir Yagers were stolen last month. How does that happen? We're breaking down the cross-country heist that got the attention of Pittsburgh Penguins fans and even the FBI. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. I'm Mallory Falk, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm here with Hey Pittsburgh newsletter editor Francesca DeBecco, our resident Pens fan. Hey, Francesca. Hey, Mallory. I can't believe I, I earned the title of resident Pens fan. I'm I'm not even that serious about <laughs> it, but um, I I do appreciate that. So good to be back on the mic with you. Our first our first duo on the mic since you've been back. Yeah, and this is such a great one uh, to delve into together. This is a pretty fun story full of a lot of twists and turns. Um, Fun and weird. Fun and weird, because (laughs) as you know, a mystery has gripped Pittsburgh for the past month or so. How did these 19,000 bobbleheads go missing? Yeah. To recap for anyone who missed this story, the Pens were supposed to give away the bobbleheads at their game against the San Jose Sharks on March 14th. This was about a month after they actually retired Yager's number. So it was one of the more special giveaways. Yeah. The bobblehead has Yager giving his signature salute, the one he used to do after scoring goals. Yeah, so cute. Uh, He was going to be at the game, too. Uh, But then the Pens announced that they'd have to postpone the giveaway because they were stolen. (laughs) It was a truly wild announcement. (laughs) Yeah, really. And uh, the Pens went into crisis mode to figure out a response, but they really leaned into it. Uh, Mallory, did you see the video that they shared of Yager? Would I be a true Pittsburgher (laughs) if I hadn't? Of course, it was so good. Yeah. Uh, For those listening, I'll set the scene. Yager sits in a gold penguins pickup truck, leans over to buckle up a prototype of his bobblehead in the passenger seat. And then he says this. Buckle up, baby. Let's go find your friends. And after the whole saga, they did ultimately end up finding his friends. They're going to be distributed at the Pens games this weekend, but they're haven't been a ton of details of what exactly went down uh, until recently. Yeah, um, sports writer and friend of the pod Rob Rossi did the Lord's work and gave us the fullest account to date of the bobblehead heist. (laughs) He just published a play-by-play in The Athletic, and he says the story took him a little out of his area of expertise. I don't know anything about bobblehead culture. I'm not a bobblehead person. So I was calling local makers of bobbleheads trying to figure out if, like, can you just help me with, like, nomenclature? Rossi talked to our host, Megan Harris, outside a brewery, so you may hear some background chatter. And got to give props to Megan for getting us this tape right before she went on vacation. Yeah, true commitment. (laughs) So anyway, it sounds like reporting this story was a true feat because it involves theft, extortionists, the FBI. So even just trying to get a bobblehead maker on the line was a challenge for Rossi. And then those bobblehead makers who had worked with the Penguins in the past, like, yeah, this guy's digging. And I'm like, I'm not trying to find out who made them. I literally don't know what words to use. Like, here's a legitimate question I have. Is it bobblehead, one word? Is it two words? Do you capitalize one letter or two? Real kudos to Rossi. I love sports stories that have nothing to do with the actual sport. So <laughs> my favorite kind of sports story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let's walk listeners through what Rossi learned, like what actually happened in this heist. 
Yeah, so it all starts when Kevin Acklin, the Penguins' president of business operations, is settling in to watch a game. It's March 12th, two days before the planned bobblehead giveaway. He's at home on his couch, tuning in to see the Pens play the Senators. And then he gets a call that this giant shipment of bobbleheads, they have been stolen. (laughs) You know, I'm imagining someone on the other line, like holding them ransom, like if you don't cough up a million dollars by 10 a.m. tomorrow, these (laughs) bobbleheads, they're going to be headless or something. I don't know. (laughs) I really wish it were that dramatic. It's an incredible image. But it was actually the trucking company that was supposed to deliver the bobbleheads that called. Um, Right. Acklin had talked to them the day before when the bobbleheads were supposed to show up. And they'd said the truck was having some engine trouble, but the shipment would arrive by the next day. So the story changed a little bit when he got this call. Yeah, there wasn't engine trouble after all. I'm still confused by this. Like, did they lie? I don't get it. Uh, But anyways, (laughs) the bobbleheads, they were swiped. So just to trace the journey of Yammer Yager bobbleheads, uh, they were designed by a vendor in Pittsburgh, but produced by a supplier in Hong Kong. That supplier was working with a trucking company based in California to get the bobbleheads to our city. And they've used all of these vendors before. So um, with other giveaways and things with without any incidents. So uh, but apparently this time a different trucking company showed up at the warehouse with all of the bobbleheads um, and they showed some false paperwork and made off with these thousands of little Yamir Yagers bouncing around <laughs> in the truck. Yeah, at first I was wondering whether they like targeted these bobbleheads, whether they had, you know, some uh, specific value. But it seems like that probably wasn't the case. I guess this kind of cargo theft is pretty common and it's actually on the rise. It started spiking right around the start of the pandemic. Yeah. So according to Rossi's article last year, there were approximately $70 million worth of stolen goods and the reported average loss was up 67% from the year before. So not just the bobble heads that are getting lifted. This is a pretty common occurrence. Um, This story just got a lot of attention because, you know, it involves a major sports team. And there's this really silly element, like you described, Francesca, these little Yager heads bopping around (laughs) um, as this huge crime is committed. Yeah, that was a stat from a report that uh, Forbes did. I was, you know, that was that was new information to me about the rise in these um, these thefts. Um, It kind of goes hand in hand. There were a lot of uh, porch thefts, too, like during Mm. the pandemic. So, um, yeah, I don't know. People are getting away with these things, but it's kind of wild. Like something like this got people aware of cargo thefts. Uh, Acklin said the whole thing sounded like an Onion article, yeah. and it really did. Um, but something that caught my attention is that the thieves didn't seem to set out to extort the Pittsburgh Penguins. Probably not. I mean, some of this is under speculation because this is still an ongoing investigation. We'll talk more about that later. Um, but here's how Rossi imagines it. This wasn't anything the companies did wrong. Like, these people forged documents. They didn't even know they were going after bobbleheads. They were just going to steal a shipment. And then they're like, oh, what? They probably don't even know who Yarmir Yager is. I mean, or, or what a hockey team is. I'm just imagining them opening a box and seeing all of these Yager heads spring up with him giving his little salute. Like that couldn't have been what they were expecting. <laughs> I know. It really does feel like a scene out of a heist movie. <laughs> anyway, by the time uh, Keith Acklin got the call that they'd been stolen, the thieves had reached out to the original trucking company. Um, side note here, Acklin used to be the chief of staff for our former mayor, Bill Peduto. So this man has probably had to handle a crisis or two before. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, probably uh, a crisis that was more serious than some (laughs) stolen bobbleheads. Uh, But this still had to be stressful because that's a lot of money for the penguins to lose if, you know, they don't recover these little guys. Yeah, I mean, according to Acklin, a batch of bobbleheads like this is a six-figure investment. Um, Yeah, well, he said, you know, six-figure investment for them, but priceless for the fans. Um, Right, right, But actually, the Pens would not have lost that money because in their contract, the supplier in Hong Kong assumed all the risk. Okay, that's good. So whatever happened, the Pens would be okay financially. Right, but I mean, obviously, they still wanted to get their fans those extra special souvenirs honoring this legend. Right. Uh, Rossi says they were discussing backup plans in case the shipment never showed back up. They're having a conversation internally like, well, should we just make different ones? You know, because they're going to take months anyway. And it's like, well, if we make different ones and that actually increases the value of the stolen ones, we don't do that. And it's like, are we going to put a stamp on the new ones? And it's like, and it's just these questions that like you realize people are like never considered asking, are we going to have to like put a 
piece of ink marking bobbleheads to show that they're not counterfeit. And even the fact that like Penguins fans had like started to pre-sell the bobbleheads using the picture that the Penguins put out in their original press release that the bobbleheads were going to be available at like before they were stolen. And like the Penguins thought, oh, this is how we'll get some leads. And they're like, no, those are all your fans. Wow, there's so much that goes into this. Uh, But okay, so while the Penguins are coming up with plans for the worst case scenario, there's also this big recovery effort in the background. Yeah. Let's remind folks of like what the search for these Yager souvenirs looks like, because I remember that there was a tracking device. I mean, there was, but it got disabled. I assume, you know, these kind of cargo bandits know how to disable a good old GPS tracker. Right. Um, So this 15 person task force came together to try and track down the bobbleheads. It included members of the FBI and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. This whole time, like the thieves were going in and out of contact. There was a false lead that the bobbleheads were in a truck outside a hotel in Columbus. Uh, Rossi says things kept taking weird turns. Here's an example from the night the bobbleheads were originally supposed to be given away. These these extortionists sent like a fake map to Kevin Acklin and be like, they're in Pittsburgh on 579. And like Acklin and some staffers run up to like the sixth level of the arena and look out the big glass atrium trying to find a a truck that doesn't exist. And you're just going like, this is so bizarre. This is wild. Uh, It was just April Fool's Day. This one in particular feels like a big April Fool's joke. But anyways, the game came and went without the bobbleheads. So I guess they were just messing with Acklin. And I know the fans at the game got vouchers for whenever the souvenirs did turn up or whenever the pens received new ones. Yeah. uh, So things go quiet for a while. And then on March 20th, so about a week after this whole fiasco started, uh, the trucking company tells Acklin that the bobbleheads have been located at a warehouse in Ontario, California, which is about 45 minutes from L.A. At first, he thought they meant Ontario, Canada. So the fact that they were not uh, in a foreign country was a small relief in this whole saga. (laughs) It's like, how did Yucker cross the border? Uh, Well, uh, but even though we have way more details about what happened, uh, the case is still under investigation. So there's a lot more to learn. Yeah. I mean, as far as I know, at least the extortionists haven't been caught. You know, maybe they have and just, you know, the feds are not revealing that yet. Um, The Pens put out a press release saying that a special cargo recovery team negotiated the return. Uh, So maybe we'll learn more in the future. I'm not sure. Rossi also says he chose not to name any of the vendors or companies in his story since they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And maybe he doesn't want them to get targeted again or, you know, at the end of the day, this seems like it was kind of a win win for the penguins. They didn't lose any money and they got the bobbleheads back and they got some fun press for it. You're right, Francesca, but um, I think there's still one essential question here. It's one that Megan uh, put to Rob Rossi. What if it's a terrible likeness? Like, it's just they've gone through all this trouble and the bobbleheads aren't actually good. Yeah, see, the, that's the that's the fr- frightening point, right? But I think that always happens with a bobblehead. I will say the prototype looks more like uh, Yager than any of the prototypes I've seen for the other guy or any of the bobbleheads of, like, for the other guys that they've done. And um, so- Did he see them? Did he approve them? Yes. That is such a good question uh, because we know that those things can sometimes not depict the likeness of our of our legends. So anyways, now that the bobbleheads have been found and brought to Pittsburgh, uh, folks who were at that game who received a voucher can mark their calendars. The Penguins are going to be distributed them on April 6th and 7th. You can pick them up at the games or on Sunday the 7th, there'll be a drive through pickup at PBG Paints. So we'll include more information in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you enjoyed the show, go ahead and tell a friend, rate us, give us five stars, and subscribe to our Hate Pittsburgh newsletter. You can also support us at membership.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you then. Let me tell you, you really haven't lived as a reporter till you're trying to call Hong Kong companies that make bobbleheads.